بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ہیلو اینڈ ویلکم ٹو ڈاکٹر ثاقب خان سائنس اکیڈمی وی ول لرن اباؤٹ تھرمو ڈائنامکس پیرامیٹرس دیز آر دوز تھرمو ڈائنامک پیرامیٹرس وچ آر اوپٹین ڈیورنگ دی افیکٹ آف ٹمپریچر اسٹڈی وی ڈیڈ ایکسپیریمنٹس آن ڈفرینٹ ٹمپریچرس تھرٹی ڈگری سی فورٹی ڈگری سی ففٹی اینڈ سکسٹی ڈگری سی وی نو اباؤٹ اور انیشیل کنسنٹریشن اینڈ دین کنسنٹریشن فائنل کنسنٹریشن اور کنسنٹریشن ایکویبریم وی اپٹین فرام دوز ایکسپیریمنٹ ایز اور کانٹیکٹ ٹائم واز اپٹیمائز فار آف ون آور سو وی ڈیڈ آل دیز ایکسپیریمنٹس آف دا ٹمپریچر آن دوز ون آور کانٹیکٹ ٹائم آفٹر ون آور وی اپٹین دی سی ای اور کنسنٹریشن اینڈ ایکویبریم وینڈ ہاف ایکویشن ول بی یوز ٹو ڈٹرمن ڈفرینٹ تھرمو ڈائنامک پیرامیٹر دا وینڈ ہاف ایکویشن از لان کے ڈی is equal to minus delta H over RT plus delta S over R. KD is our adsorption equilibrium constant, which we will obtain through this formula. That is, KD is equal to QE over CE. Delta H is our change in enthalpy or the total energy or heat present in the system. That is, delta H. R is our universal gas constant, while T is our temperature in Kelvin. Delta S is change in entropy. It is basically delta S on the basis of which we will calculate the disorder or randomness in the system. If our delta S value is greater than zero, then this means that the reaction will lead to increase in entropy and the reaction is favored in the direction that increases disorder. This means that there will be more disorder. More disorder means that the amount of energy present in the system, that amount of energy which is unavailable to do, to do work, okay, that is unavailable, that is our entropy. So if delta S is greater than zero, this means that more energy is unavailable for the system or for the reaction. If delta S is less than zero, then the reaction lead to decrease in entropy or there will be less randomness or less disorder or there will be less or decreased disorder in the system. More energy will be available for the uh, reaction. Then from delta H and delta S, we will calculate the delta G. or this is also called as gibbs free energy this free energy is the free energy which is present in the system or in the reaction if our delta g value is negative this means that the system is releasing energy which means that the system can proceed without energy input so on the basis of delta g or gibbs free energy we determine whether our system is spontaneous or non spontaneous whether it is endothermic or exothermic if the system is the system is called spontaneous when there is no need for any input of energy this means that the reaction can run naturally if the delta g value is positive this means that we will need some we will provide some input energy to the system for the reaction to be taking place that is called as non spontaneous reaction from van der waals equation we will calculate the delta h and delta s and then from delta h and delta s we will calculate the gibbs free energy so this is our went half equation ln kd is equal to minus delta h over rt plus delta s over r you can see over here there is this is normal linear plot equation y is equal to mx plus c this is our mx and this is our c this means that we will plot a graph between ln kd and 1 over t our 1 over t will be on x axis ln kd will be our on y axis then from the slope we will calculate delta h and from the intercept we will calculate delta s our slope will be equal to minus delta h over r while our intercept will be equal to delta s over r r is the universal gas constant and then delta h minus t delta s we will calculate the gibbs free energy let's go to our data and play with with our data the temperature 30 40 50 60 we will convert it into kelvin so is equal to the temperature plus 273 and we'll double click this one this will convert all the temperatures to kelvin then 1 over t 1 divided by the temperature which we calculated in kelvin that will be our 1 over t as our ci is mini in milligram per liter we will convert the ci into mole per liter for converting mole per liter we will first we will convert ci into gram per liter and then from gram per liter the that gram per liter we will divide it with the ro16 molecular weight to get mole per liter so the formula is is equal to milligram per liter divided by 1000 this is now gram per liter then again divided by the molecular weight okay. 
सो दिस इज दी सी आई इन मोल पर लीटर ओके इन दिस फॉर्मूला वी विल लॉक दिस वैल्यू and then copy this formula the same we will do for ce that is is equal to milligram per liter di divided by 1000 again divided by the molecular weight of our dye or our compound okay so the qe will be equal to as our weight and volume volume was 0.01 while our mass was also while our mass was also 0.01 so to convert qe initial concentration ci minus final concentration multiplied by volume divided by weight and these values we will lock we we'll lock these values as we will be using these values throughout the formula so we we'll lock those these values then press enter and let convert this number so this is our qe value now this qe now we will calculate the kd kd which is equal to qe over ce as you can see over here in the formula Q, kd is equal to qe over ce so this will be equal to qe divided by the ce value so this is our qe over ce value then we will calculate ln ln of the kd value and copy this formula okay now we will plot 1 over t versus ln kd as in the equation we have ln kd we have ln kd on y axis and 1 over t on x axis so we will plot this we will plot a scatter chart and you can see over here this is our ln kd on x axis we have this is our thermodynamics parameters so let's change it into thermodynamic parameter or thermodynamic study whatever you would like so as we obtain these values on x axis is 1 over t on y axis let's add the chart title this is 1 over t 1 divided by temperature and this is our l n k d ln k d now we will add the trend line and go to more options linear trend line and 
display the equation and and display the equation and r square value let's check those one so over here we obtain the r square uh, sorry r square value r square value and slope and intercept value so our slope value is minus 3986.9 while our intercept value is 13.821 so if you see we will calculate our delta h from the slope we will calculate our delta h from the slope while intercept delta s over r so our delta h will be equal to if we convert this formula delta h will be equal to minus slope into r so this will be equal to minus into slope value multiplied by as it is the universal gas constant it is in joule per mole so we will convert into kilojoule per mole so it will be equal to eight point 314 divided by 1000 divided by 1000 to convert it into kilojoule per mole so this is our delta h value as we have minus sign in the slope is equal to minus delta h over r so that's why we multiply it with minus as minus is already present over here our delta s value will be equal to intercept into r so this will be equal to intercept multiplied by r value 8 point 8 point 314 divided by 1000 to convert it into kilo kilojoule so our delta s value is 0 0.11 while delta h value is 33.14 so now we can calculate the delta g value delta g is equal to delta h minus t delta s so this is equal to delta h minus the temperature into delta s value So, this is our Gibbs free energy at temperature 30 degree C or 303 degree Kelvin. We will lock these values lock this value delta H value and lock the delta N value no, sorry delta S value these values we will use while we will change only the temperature value so our system in our system at different temperature 30 40 50 and 60 degree c the delta g value is in minus if the delta g value is in minus this means that our system is spontaneous system reaction with a negative delta g value delta g release energy which means that they can proceed without energy input when they release energy this means that it is an exothermic reaction and they can we do not need to provide any energy input while positive delta g value delta g value is non spontaneous and we need to provide the we need to provide them with the energy endothermic reaction hopefully now you understand how to cal how to calculate the thermodynamics parameters if you have the temperature value and initial and final concentration value if there are any issues you can tell me in the comment section below if you think that the information provided in this video are helpful then please like the video share with your colleagues and with your students and don't forget to subscribe the 
channel for for more informative videos like this your likes and subscription shall motivate me to create more informative contents like this thank you very much and allah hafiz